Welcome everybody to another Voice of Nick show. We're doing more of our post America illustrating. Um, <clears throat> we have the full composition uh, in, in red, and then we did the figures on top of it, rough versions. Uh, so now we would move forward and do the non-rough versions of the figures. So let's just go piece by piece, I guess, and uh, and put these guys in. So uh, let's do something here. I'm just going to put a black layer on this layer and turn it off. Uh, it doesn't, maybe it updates if I refresh this. No, maybe if I leave this on. Yeah, so I'm going to turn this off so that I can see visually that this is a layer that we don't, it's not blank. Okay, so Aeneas, we're gonna turn off. Priam, turn off. And then Neoptolemus, turn to 50% or so. And we're gonna lose the underdrawing now because we don't need it anymore. And I guess we'll just turn off the this thing too. So everything's off. Now, we come in with a black brush, turn it back to our usual size. And I just want to confirm that this is the brush size that we've been using. So let's just make a layer real quick. Yeah, it looks like it. Now we're going to do our stuff. Get a little line like this. We're essentially drawing the same thing, but more detailed this time and with cleaner lines. It's the equivalent, sort of like the inking stage in a comic book, except we're still doing a little bit of designing.
Logistically, I don't see how this would make any sense, actually. Unless, okay, let's try this. See, this is where we make these kind of decisions of, like, actually worrying about how our designs would make sense in the universe of the picture. If there was some kind of thing like this, then the hair could all be coming from this one direction. Let's just fill in the hair while we're here. We don't want every single crevice to be filled with the hair. We want it to have a little bit of white showing through because that looks good when, when we put the under color in. Okie dokie. So this needs a little bit of refinement. This part of the drawing is not really there. It's just kind of indicated. Um, let's try to do something interesting with this as well. So maybe it'll be like a, a little design. There's like a chain. this part Take a look. Yeah, that's really cool. And that's holding his cape on the back.
So let's try and get number one. I guess we'll put the cape in here. And the cape's not gonna be doing anything really dynamic. It's just kind of sitting there. I really liked the uh, concepts we had for the cape uh, that we, uh, you know, used from that Odysseus picture, where it was like really fluttering, even though you know there was really like no wind. But I think for this one, there's enough action that we don't need to exaggerate the action. What's like an interesting uh, pommel we could do for this or whatever you call this back part? Maybe like a... Thing like that. Good. So we're gonna add this thing, which now we're implying in the other pictures of Neoptolemus, I, I kind of expected this was a piece of the armor, but now I'm kind of retconning it almost, or at least just changing my interpretation of what it is into a belt instead. It's not really a retcon because I've never s suggested that it was part of the armor. It's just what I assumed it was based on the way I drew it. That's the funny thing though about changing. When we go from one style to the other, we're like redesigning the character to fit that style. And a lot of times it means you have to make decisions you never had to make before regarding like where things are on their person or what thing, you know, little patterns are supposed to represent. Because like from the black figure style where he's a lot more, um, I guess you'd call it like cartoony uh, into this one, there's a lot of like more realistic concessions we have to make. So I figure this, is just like a jeweled 
thing. This armor that Neoptolemus is wearing is um, Achilles' armor, his father's armor. And Achilles' armor uh, near the end of the Iliad, in the Iliad when uh, Patroclus is slain, Hector steals Patroclus' armor and wears it. So, And because Patroclus was impersonating Achilles, Hector has Achilles' armor, and Achilles no longer has any armor. So before he goes out to fight, um, Hephaestus, the god of you know, craftsmanship, makes him a new set of armor, uh, which is like, you know, divine armor. And when Achilles dies, his armor is, through a series of events, passed to Neoptolemus, his son. So Neoptolemus here is wearing what would have been Achilles' armor. So we're not only designing Neoptolemus's thing of like, oh, what would be cool for Neoptolemus to wear, but also we have to consider that this is, not only are we designing what this picture looked like of Neoptolemus fighting Eurypolis and this one where Neoptolemus arrives, but also this one where Achilles encounters Penthesilea because this is the same armor. By this point, he would already have that armor. So you can see the design is the same, uh, the pattern here but uh it's just a different uh we're we're it's a different character wearing it So for this, um, I'm going to draw this on a different layer so that we can duplicate it. Because there's no point doing this twice. We're just trying to make this a little bit more consistent now. Let's get rid of the under layer here. These kinds of things, we don't have to worry that much about it because within the larger picture, this is a very small detail. Like, it's not that small on screen, but it's like, there's so much going on in this picture that you're not really going to be paying attention to the uniformity of Neoptolemus's breastplate. But it's nice to try and to try and get it as close as we can. And again, we don't want to do it where it's like perfectly done, you know, like a algorithmically or on like Adobe Illustrator or something where it's like scientifically exact circles because we do want it to still look like it was done by a you know 500 bc greek potter in terms of what you know what the design could accomplish okay so now on another layer we're going to turn this off and we'll put these little studs in there I like that we have differentiating factors between Achilles and Neoptolemus as well. Like just because Neoptolemus inherits Achilles armor, you you would your first thought would be like, "Oh, well he kind of would look the same then because he's wearing the same costume." Um and there's not that much to di differentiate faces in Greek art uh, pottery art. They don't really draw facial expressions and 
you know, there's not that much you can do if they're wearing a helmet. But we gave them a few different things, like Neoptolemus has these kind of uh, clothes under the armor that come out to here. He's got uh, a cape on. So, like, there, there are elements that do differentiate him visually from Achilles, even if he has his helmet on, which he typically does. In these red figure pictures, in black figure pictures, they almost always have the helmet on. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that, but they very often do. In these red figure ones, it's a little more rare if it's like an important character for them to be wearing the helmet. Because again, it's kind of like in Mass Effect where when you're, uh, when you have a helmet on your character, on Commander Shepard, and then you go into a cutscene, even if you're wearing the helmet, by default, the game will just take the helmet off because you want to see your character. And it's the same thing with these Greek pottery artists where they would do that, where it's like he's wearing the helmet, but it's like sticking off his head. Tactically very stupid, you know, if you're actually in a fight because your head's going to get chopped off or scratched or, you know, you could poke your eye out or something. But in terms of showing the character, it makes a lot of sense. So it's kind of like their way of splitting the difference where it's like, okay, well, he's wearing the helmet. We're showing that he has the helmet on, but it's just, you know, we're showing his face also. Yep, that looks about right. And we saved ourselves a lot of time by not, um, you know, having to do that twice. Because that's the kind of design that, like, when you do it on one side, it's, like, impossible to get it to look the same on the other side. Now we got to change his collarbone here as well because it's a little bit... Uh, off, off center. Really, he should be facing that way. This is more of like a contemporary, anatomically correct way of putting his collarbone. But in Greek art, the 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 typically the chest is facing perfectly towards the camera, and uh, it wouldn't really go at like a you know angle that's not forty five ninety, you know a very very regulated degree. Okay, now all these are combined. Now let's take his collarbone and just move it. I'm also going to move it down a little bit. Good. Okay, now let's get the uh, the jewels into this part. What do we have in our underdrawing here? Okay, so they're going all along this, and then there's kind of like a when you're racking up pool balls thing going on here. So maybe let's try and get three into the bottom row and then increase it. No, three doesn't fit really. We want to put two, I guess. If only I could fit three. Let's try and fit three. Maybe there'll be smaller jewels in this part. If they run to the edge, you can fit three of them, but... It might be too crowded. Q 
keep zooming itself out. It's really annoying. All right, that's good. It's just differently sized jewels, I guess. And I, I'm pretty sure they describe what Hephaestus' armor looks like that he makes for Achilles in the Iliad. Um, but at a certain point, we're just taking artistic license and coming up with our own stuff. Like in the chapter where we show Philoctetes, um, they make a very specific point in Post-America. Quintus describes Philoctetes' armor uh, because his belt and his quiver and all this stuff is from Heracles, who was Philoctetes' friend. And, uh, you know, it's got all these, like, crazy events. It's also made by Hephaestus, uh, and it, sh it depicts all these, like, really detailed things that it, the book describes. And I just totally went... I didn't depict any of that stuff, and instead um, just made it, like, a general reference to Heracles that he's wearing a costume that Heracles has been depicted wearing in other pieces of art. Because sometimes, you know, for whatever reason, it might not work to depict that. Like, the belt, you're never going to get that much detail on unless it's zoomed in on the belt. Um, so we have to make our own decisions a lot of times with that. It's not about just literally doing what the book says. My understanding of a lot of illustrations is that many times the illustrator hasn't even read the book. And, uh, you know, that would seem to be ill-advised, but... For people who do that for a living, I'm sure that they don't have time to read every book that they illustrate. So I guess it makes sense. Okay, so the cape we're going to do once we get the rest of the body in, because we don't know where the cape can go yet. Good. Um... <sighs> Welcome, uh, Mild Weevil, to the show. Hey, Nick. This is awesome, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Welcome on in. Are you a Greek, uh, Greek art aficionado? Oh, wait. This is the wrong layer. Why is this showing up like a dotted line here? Must have been a glitch. Now what's this supposed to represent? I'm not sure. I think it was just a rogue line. Let's try and clean up the way that this inside of the shield looks. Alright, now 
let's lose the, the guide layer here because it's going to screw us. Sometimes having the guide layer, when we're trying to go off script, the guide layer can only hurt us because it's like we're looking at one thing and drawing a different thing. Let's try and come up with something for the, the armband here. Maybe it's like, maybe there's some kind of like sunburst thing happening. Kind of cool. I like this. It might be a little overly detailed for, you know, what we're doing. We'll keep it for now. There is such a concept as like an economy of details where we don't wanna put details in a spot where you're not trying to get the viewer to look. Or else you're just hurting yourself and hurting your composition. Get a little pattern here. It extends through this thing. That might be a little cooler than what we had. I like that. This is really the time when we, we already have the drawing uh, in its rough form. So now all we're doing is recreating the drawing, but then adding details anywhere we think it would benefit the picture. So this is a time of extra designing, like we're still designing, but we're not designing the main thing anymore. We're just designing all of the little tiny you know, sort of insignificant to the greater picture, but they certainly contribute to the value of the image as a whole in terms of like 
but let's say that it's not going to change the way the story plays out in the picture, but it is going to change the perception of the overall picture. We're taking our time, making everything look the way we want. It's turning out pretty, pretty okay. This aspect uh, needs a lot of work. We, we got to figure out a whole design language for this. I have a few pieces of reference that I could pull from. But mostly it's just going to be a matter of trying to come up with something that works. Okie dokie. Yeah, because I don't really have any 
visual information about this entire section here, this, this piece of clothing or armor, whatever it is. It's sort of a very roughly indicated mess. Let's do it on a different layer. So I guess it's kind of like a, it's like a piece of underclothing that goes between the armor and the skin to avoid, you know, that's what a lot of uh, medieval uh, soldiers would do because obviously it is very uncomfortable for metal to be grating up against your flesh all day. This isn't a very convincing cloth texture though. We'll see how it plays out. Do a couple of new things with this section. Whoa, what? Okay. intersecting with anything is the other question. Let's also stretch this part a bit. Okay. We'll merge that in.
But this one, it's a little uh, crooked, so let's sort of just fix it on the night. That's better. Okay, so now all we need is the rest of the cape here. And there's nothing too fancy happening with the cape, really. Ah, that's what that was here. That was a part of the cape. I'm not sure if we really need that. We'll do it for now. There's nothing to indicate that it is a part of the cape, really. Maybe we'll put like a little line there. Like unless you're following this line down to then assume that that is part of the cape. And I was thinking I would have it like sort of fall over his arm like that, but I, I don't, I think that's just going to confuse the shape. So I, I will not do that. Great. Now we just want to put in his uh, greaves, the details on his greaves, which is sort of the same as his main breastplate uh, design. Yeah, we don't want to lose this as soon as we can because that's a really deceptive to try and do it based on that very unscientific underdrawing. Okie dokie. Let's do the same for this. You know, these uh, circles are a little bolder than the ones on the top, so let's just try and match the, the feel of that. We'll probably use it where they're a little more inset. 
So there's like a border between the circles and the edge. For the most part, I guess. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, Neoptolemus then, great. Very happy with that. Let's take a look at the underdrawing, see if we missed anything. Nope. The one thing I wanna change about this is that his, uh, his right leg is very small. So let's just, uh, or his right foot rather. Still pretty small compared to the other one, so we'll just keep keep making it bigger. Yeah, that's probably fine. So now um, we have him. Let's get the under drawing layer. We're going to use the background color. And it looks strange when this is orange, when his like color is orange now, but when it is in the uh, proper, you know, setting for one of these pictures, then it looks correct. So this is all would be filled in. All we need to do obviously is the outer sections of the the things that touch the uh, background. And for this, we're gonna go outside of his hair because that's not gonna read against the black background unless we have a white or orange uh, thing around it.
Oops. All right, now let's just fill in the rest of this. Okay, so we got him all on one oops, layer actually, that's nice. This we'll put into his main layer, just turned off. Now we'll turn everybody else back on. And he's definitely looking pretty clean. And then against the background, nothing's really getting lost. The hair sticks properly out. Uh, good. We could probably fix up a couple of little details now that we're looking at it like this. So we'll sort of round out, oops, round out the way that his hair uh, outline works. Get rid of things that stick out like that. There's a rogue. Oh no, that's part of Priam's foot. Everything else looking good. Okay, great. So we have one finalized character and we have six rough figures. And we essentially just do the same thing we did for Neoptolemus for everybody else until they all look like this uh, level of line art. So good, ladies and gents. That's gonna do it for this one. Thank you for joining the show. The channel is called The Voice of Nick. If you want to see more, don't forget to hit the follow button, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.